to let you in on a little secret that I haven't really talked about with anyone. I've never felt that feminine. My whole life, it seemed like I looked around at what other girls and then women valued, liked, excelled at. And it's like I didn't fit in somehow. And to be completely honest, there have been times that I have tried to lay the part, but it never really felt that authentic. And at this point in my life, there are some things that I've started to realize about this concept of femininity. And for one thing, there is no acting like a female. And there is no one way that women feel or act or behave. That just isn't a thing. In order to fully realize that, I needed more life experience and perspective to see it. And now I realize that however I choose to express my feminine side is perfectly fine. But it may be something that I need to reflect on and sort out. So when I started to learn about astrology and came upon this concept of feminine and masculine energy or this yin and yang energy, it was really intriguing to me. I mean, what would my chart say when it has to do with my feminine side? In this video, we're going to look at what feminine energy means in terms of astrology and where you can find feminine energy in your chart. Welcome to The Happy Mystic. And if you're interested in learning how to love and accept yourself more so that you have more love to spread into the world, you have come to the right place. So grab some tea and let's go. Feminine energy in astrology is just a way to describe a set of behaviors that is reflective and intuitive, nurturing. This energy is more passive, but that doesn't mean that it sits back and takes orders. But it does mean that it reads the room and thinks before it acts. You can think of this energy as more introverted and centered. And female people make other new people in their bodies. So this energy has to do with creation and bringing things from here and here to here. There are a few places in your chart where you can track down feminine energy, but let's start with the elements. Water and earth are considered feminine or yin elements. So that means that the feminine signs of the zodiac are Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces, Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. One easy thing you can do right off the bat is to check your elements breakdown in your chart and to see if either of these feminine elements are dominant. If you open your chart in astro.com, you can see how your feminine elements stack up by looking at this box but I like to use solar fire astrology software. And that shows the same information like this. You can check the link in the description to see how you can get 15% off solar fire plus our exclusive bonuses. So looking at this element breakdown can show you if you are dominant in feminine or masculine energy, or if you're a good mix of both. And while this graph is good for pointing out if there are any glaringly obvious differences between your feminine and masculine elements, it does have its limitations. It can give you a general lay of the land when it comes to your feminine energy, but you do need to dig a little deeper. I like to see where three of the most vital placements in your chart sit, and that is your sun, your moon, and your first house cusp or your ascendant. Then you can take it further. So look at your sun first. Is it in a feminine or masculine sign? This is the core of who you are. So you can think of it as kind of the foundation that the rest of you is built on. You can see that for me, it's in Sagittarius, which is a masculine sign. So we're starting to get somewhere. Next, look to see where your first house cusp or your ascendant lands. And this is also called your rising sign. This is how you interact in the world. And a lot of astrologers call this the masculine. So is your rising sign feminine or masculine? While your sun's gonna offer you clues about how you feel on the inside, your rising sign is going to give you insight about the feminine or masculine vibe you're putting out there. You can see that mine is found in Cancer, which is a feminine side for sure. So for me, even though I don't feel particularly feminine on the inside, the way I come off to others may be a little bit more feminine. And the contrast between those two is interesting because I think it's probably true. And I would say others would describe me as this domestic nurturing person. So far, we've looked at your sun and your ascendant when it comes to feminine qualities in your chart but we still haven't looked at the moon. And I saved that planet for last on purpose because this planet itself is considered to be feminine. This planet is all about how you process emotions, what makes you happy and what makes you feel joy. So even if every single planet in your chart is in a masculine sign, you still have feminine planets in your chart to look at like the moon. And if you're interested in expressing feminine energy more, by honoring your moon sign, whatever that may be, may help you get more in touch with your emotions and strengthen that feminine moon. So if you're wanting to build up your feminine side, I would definitely look to your moon sign and your moon's house. So looking at my chart, my moon is in Taurus, a feminine sign, which I also find interesting. So my moon in Taurus wants peace and quiet, except when it can listen to music because 
Taurus loves music. It needs security, stability, and to spend time in the great outdoors with mother nature. My moon happens to be in the 11th house of friends. This is working with others, clubs and organizations and future plans. So when I think about my Taurus moon and what it wants, am I honoring that consistently? Absolutely not. So since I'm wanting to honor my feminine energy more, one thing I can do right off the bat is just spend more time outside. I work from home and have kind of been a hermit for a while. It's winter here. Right now there are no organizations that I belong to whatsoever. I am not involved in my community at all. So I'm definitely not honoring my feminine moon and I could do a lot better. So now open your chart and do this for yourself. And when you do, here are some questions you can think about. First of all, are your sun or ascendant in feminine signs? And if so, which signs are we talking about? What does that sign want or desire? Are you honoring those parts of yourself? And if not, what are some ways that you could? What do they say about how you feel on the inside and what kind of vibe you're putting out there? Do they match? Do they not match? How do you feel about that? Reflect. And what does your moon need from you? Looking at its house, what kinds of activities feeds your feminine moon soul? Are you giving your moon what it wants or are you neglecting it? For me, using the chart in this way like a tool is what drew me to astrology to start with. And if next you wanna use your chart as a tool to point you to your purpose, this next video is for you. So go share your love and take care.